time. Daddy, we don't have a choice. Jean and I have lovely boys. Together, we are Jean and Daddy. Jean and Daddy. David is my boyfriend. Jean and Daddy. Our fun will never end. What are you doing? I'm bored as shit. I don't know what to do now. How about a game review? What? You mean board games, card games, or video games? Video games, silly. Alright, not sure there are any new games out recently that I should review. I mean, Sonic and Shonic just reviewed Lego City Undercover. Did someone call our names? Sonic? Shonic? You came down the chimney! It's not even Christmas right now! We wanted to make a badass entrance. Just jumping through the window like an action movie star is too cliched. So I thought, why not the chimney? Okay, whatever you say, Bert the Chimney Sweep. <laughs> so, you were saying about a game review? Well guys, I was just suggesting to Jean that she could do a video game review. Since it's another one of those boring Sundays. Which game were you thinking of doing? Well, I was planning on doing Sonic Boom Fire and Ice at the end of the year, but I figured you would be doing that in the fall, but I'm still planning on doing a review of that game eventually. How about an old Mario game or something? Well, I suppose we could do Super Mario 64. Oh yes, that's a classic. A classic. Just like a classic Sonic that I resemble so perfectly. Then it's settled. Let's review Super Mario 64. But first, I haven't had breakfast yet. Want some pancakes and bacon? Sure, we haven't had breakfast either. My gosh, those were the tastiest blueberry pancakes I've ever had. They were my mom's famous recipe. I miss when my mom made those for me. It's okay, they were tasty. Better than the ones that Shonic made. I heard that! I mean, yours are still good, Shonic, but Jean's are better. Just like how her drawings of me in my bathrobe are better than the ones that my original creator made for me. Okay, guys, let us stop with the Deadpooling and get this review started. No! Not that game! Burn it! Why do I have that game? Sorry, the Super Mario 64 should be in here somewhere in the first fast collection of N64 games here. Super Mario 64. This is Mario's very first 3D platformer. This game revolutionized 3D gaming as we know it. Before they were all those overrated pieces of garbage called Call of Duty, Halo, Grand Theft Auto, and Assassin's Creed. Hey, Shonk and I actually like Assassin's Creed. Shall we? Right when you open the game, there's Mario's face. And you can do a bunch of silly things with his face, like pulling on his ear, his hat, his chin, and even his nose. Mario is basically turning into Mr. Fantastic here! I hope you're not referencing fan fuck up 4. No, why would I ever? Because you compared stretching Mario's face to Mr. Fantastic, the guy with elastic abilities. But yeah, Luffy from One Piece and Elastigirl are stretchier than Mr. Fantastic. Hey, look at this! Look what I can do with Mario's nose!
Look at me, I'm Pinocchio! <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think we're having a little too much fun here. Now let's begin with the actual game itself. It starts off with the, a little romantic message from Peach to Mario. Dear David, please come to Oregon. I've baked a cake for you. Yours truly, Jiniku. P.S. Hashtag David Jean for life. <laughs> That's not what the letter actually says, Sonic. I know. I just wanted to have a little fun with this game. Now we begin in front of Princess Peach's very own version of Hogwarts Castle, where Mario begins his own adventure through the, mm, the exciting world of Peach's Castle. While you're in there, you can explore many different rooms in the castle. But only if you've got enough power stars. And the only way you can collect power stars is if you complete levels. Well, duh. That's how 3D Mario games work. But not 3D Land or 3D World. For those, you just jump onto the poles as if it were a 2D Mario game. We start off with the first level of the game, and that's bob Battlefield. In the game, you will need to complete eight missions to get the power stars, like defeat a mini boss, collect the eight red coins, and even collect 100 coins. The missions are kind of obvious from the names they're given, like Foot Race with Cube and the Quick. But he's not as quick as me. There's also Mario Rings to the Sky, Shoot to the Island in the Sky, and Behind Chain Jumps Gate, and so on and so forth. Just the names of the missions alone give you a hint as to where the power stars are. For all we know, there could have been a mission called Play the Poke Flute to Wake Up Snorlax. There could have been, but no. So anyway, along the way, you can collect very useful items, like the Wing Cap, the Metal Cap, and the Vanish Cap. Any more caps in there like Captain America? <laughs> Just kidding. The Wing Cap makes Mario fly around in the air if you do a triple jump, or if you shoot yourself out of a cannon. Just as long as you don't get bossed around by an annoying platypus who has a whistle problem. I have a whistle problem too. That you do, Shonic. So do I. Mine isn't as bad as yours, but I do have a singing problem, but I don't really see it as a problem. So the Metal Cop obviously could turn you into a Metal Mario. A Metal Man, eh? Like Iron Man? Or the Man of Steel? Or the Tin Man from The Wizard of Oz? Or a song from Donkey Kong Country called Metalhead? The Metal Cap can make you sink to the bottom of the sea, and it basically makes him extremely heavy. There's that wood again! Heavy! Why are things so heavy in the future? Is there a problem with the Earth's gravitational pull? Great Scott! And lastly, the Vanish Cap. Just like the name suggests, you vanish and turn invisible. Like the invisible woman from Van Fuck Up 4? Ow! What was that for? For making a joke about Van Fuck Up 4? Sorry! But with the Vanish Cap, you can walk through metal fences and even walls. Hello! It's -a me, Danny a Phantom! <laughs> 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 I had to do that! Also, as part of the throwback galaxy in Super Mario Galaxy 2, Womp's Fortress makes an appearance in there. I kinda knew that since we played Super Mario Galaxy far before we tried out Super Mario 64. I knew that stage in Super Mario 64 looked familiar. We forgot to mention the soundtrack in this game. So many unforgettable tunes, like the sweet and soothing melody of Jolly Roger Bay and Dire Dire Docks. Huh? For some reason, I thought you said Jolly Rancher Bay. Just don't creepily feed a cherry Jolly Rancher to Gene, like Lex Luthor did to that one guy in Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice. Sorry, my ears aren't working properly. And Bowser's theme, quite an intense and hardcore tune. It's like the soundtrack you hear when you're about to head into a secret military base set up by the First Order or Hydra. Yeah, I could totally hear that playing during Project Sonic 2017, when Sonic and I head right into Evil Emperor Robotnik's fortress. But we don't know what the plot of that game is going to be, and we don't know the official name yet. Listen boys, no offense, I appreciate that you're having fun here, but you guys have a serious knack of getting off topic. Shall we? 
There are five different floors in the main hub world. The first floor where Mario enters the castle, which has Bobomb Battlefield, Lom's Fortress, Jelly Ranch, uh, I mean Roger Bay, Cool Cool Mountain, which totally predicted the box office success of Frozen many years ahead of time, and Big Bull's Haunt, which is Luigi's Mass Mansion on acid. Plus, the Bowser level of this floor is called Bowser the Dark World. The basement is where you'll find the other levels, like Hazy Mage Cave, Lethal Lava Land, which totally got its name from Lethal Weapon, Shifty Sandlands, where there's no painting to enter that world, just a dead-end wall, and Dia Dia Docks, which is where Bowser's submarine is hiding. We all live in Bowser submarine, Bowser submarine, Bowser submarine. Gosh, the Bowser level for the basement is called Bowser in the Fire Sea. And the second and third floor is where you'll find the last seven levels and the last Bowser level. The second four levels consist of Snowman's Land, Wet Dry World, Tall Tall Mountain. That's my favorite level, Tall Tall Mountain. And let's not forget Tiny Huge Island. Man, I hate that level. Oh yeah, I forgot. Is it because of that gulping fish? Yes, that fucking gulping big fish. So anyway, we also forgot to mention secret levels found in the castle, and other locations that have stars in them. You could chase rabbits around to collect stars. Toads even have some of them if, for you, if you just go up to them and talk to them. So the secret levels include the Princess's Secret Slide, the Secret Aquarium, Tower of the Wing Cap, which is where you unlock the Wing Cap, and even a secret star in Bowser's stages. There's Spanish Cap under the moat, where you could get the Vanish Cap. Well, in order to do that, you would need to do an air stop in, on two pillars. Cameron of the metal cap, which is where you get the metal cap, but you would need to get that in Hazy Maze Cave. And there's also Wing Mario over the rainbow. And just what the title implies, you need to use the wing cap to fly over the ra fly with the rainbows. And the final battle with Bowser is where all your skills are put to the test. And if you collect all the power stars, and there are 120 total. That's how you unlock Yoshi at the end of the game. And he gives you a bunch of 1-ups. The final level is called Bowser in the Sky. To get to it, you will need to go up the endless staircase, past TikTok Clock and Rainbow Ride. This is rather different from the previous Bowser battles, where you just try to grab his tail and toss him off the ledge and into a bomb once. So long, King Bowser! But this time, you will need to hit him three times into a bomb, while the stage is being torn apart. And with grabbing Bowser by the tail, you need to be extra precise for where you're trying to aim him. If you miss the bomb, you're fucked. Once you do beat the ever-living shit out of Bowser and save the princess, she gives Mario a romantic kiss on the nose. Just like something that a certain Dave would do if he meets Jean in real life. And helping her out with a whole bunch of things like writing the entire script to this review. And she bakes a nice tasty cake for Mario and they all live happily ever after. Until he has to clean Isle Delfino, gets stuck in a painting in Luigi's Mansion, gets sucked into space, and fights Zeddy alongside me in Rio de Janeiro. And that was Super Mario 64. Thank you Sonic and Shonic for helping me out with this review. I truly appreciate it. Anytime, Gene. What about me? You too, Diddy. This game truly is a timeless classic. With the amazing level design that still stands out today, unforgettable soundtracks, enemies with new and improved designs from the 2D games, and overall, it truly is a fun experience, which will only get better for years to come. I'm giving this an 11 out of 10. I'm going to give it a 64 out of 10. Since this is a Nintendo 64 game, I had to put the number 64 in there. I thought it was pretty funny, but for me, I'm going to give this a 76 out of 10. Well, since you guys gave nothing but Easter egg answers referring to the Nintendo 64 and Macanoony 76, I'm just going to give this a 12 out of 10. So, what do you want to do now, guys? How will we have a Kong battle in Donkey Kong 64 with the four of us? That sounds like a great idea. I mean, I have no inventions to work on at the moment, so sure, why the hell not? <laughs>